Worksheets in Vectorworks are spreadsheets that contain data about your design. This data can be entered manually by you, or leverage the full power of worksheets by having them talk to your design. That is, the data in worksheets can be read directly from objects in your model, meaning schedules are accurate and errors are reduced. Working with worksheets is straightforward and intuitive with all controls right at your fingertips in a visually pleasing modern interface. Worksheets are one of several kinds of resources in Vectorworks, meaning they are repeatable and reusable throughout your file and cataloged in the resource manager. A worksheet can be placed in various locations within your file, whether it's on design layers or sheets, and display the same data in every instance. Worksheets can be created in several ways. These include using the create report command to start a custom worksheet from scratch, specifying which objects in your model you want data from and what data you want from those objects, or to begin with a built-in pre-formatted worksheet to use as a starting point and then edit as you wish. Importing a common spreadsheet file format such as CSV or Excel, or creating a blank worksheet in the resource manager and setting its criteria to display the information you want. Once created, working with worksheets, whether it be their data or their formatting, is easily done via a clear, accessible interface. Looking at the overall worksheet window, the thin bar at the top is the title bar, where you will see the worksheet's name and controls for closing the worksheet, expanding or collapsing the worksheet, and the ever-present question mark that will automatically take you to the associated help system information. Below that is the toolbar and its tabs for general, formatting, and printing tools and commands. Next in line in the interface is the formula bar, and then the body of the worksheet itself. As you resize the worksheet window, many of the toolbar's sections also resize, reducing the on-screen space they occupy but still giving you access to their tools via popover controls. To collapse the entire toolbar, simply click on a tab. Clicking on the tab a second time reveals the tools again. And hovering your pointer over any tool reveals a tooltip that lets you find out a bit more information about what the tool or command does. Looking at the controls in the interface, the general toolbar contains tools and commands for recalculating or refreshing the data on worksheets that talk to your model, importing or exporting worksheet data, and placing your worksheet on a drawing, basic commands for editing data in cells, a zoom control for your working view of the worksheet below, commands for resizing rows and columns, and a command to show or hide the working view of the grid below. The Format toolbar contains tools and commands for customizing the look of your worksheets and their data. Formatting numbers that appear in cells, including many standard formatting options such as decimal places, unit notations, leaders and trailers, and dates. Formatting images that you may have chosen to display in cells. The Fill Color, Border Style, and Border Location options for cells the font formatting options for cells' contents, alignment commands for the contents of cells. These set how text in cells will be aligned horizontally and vertically. And commands for merging cells, wrapping text in cells, and vertical or horizontal orientation of text. On the printing toolbar are tools and commands for page setup and printing, page margins, headers and footers, and options for printing the column letters, row numbers, and database headers. In the top right corner, under the gear icon, are settings for recalculating the arithmetic of worksheet cells as you are working in the cells, the default font of the worksheet, the image resolution field for images in cells, which applies to all cells with images, and 
an option to turn on or off the toolbar group labels, saving you space. Focusing on the elements of the formula bar, this is the cell address, consisting of the column letter and row number when you have a regular spreadsheet cell selected. This is the database menu, which has commands for specifying which objects are reporting data and what data they are reporting. This is the function menu, used to insert functions or criteria into cells, further fine-tuning the data that is being reported. The Confirm and Cancel buttons for the formula field, and the expandable formula field itself, which is expandable if extra long formulas are needed. When it comes to working with worksheets and their data, it's quick and easy to do, with all controls readily available. Worksheet slicing gives you the ability to freely split worksheets and, if need be, distribute them across multiple pages so that large worksheets can be easily laid out on your pages. Once split, all data flows effortlessly from one linked slice to another, keeping your data organized and complete. When you place a worksheet that contains more data than will naturally fit on a page, Worksheet slicing is useful for accommodating all of your data. Splitting a worksheet allows you to manually choose the location where the split will occur, either horizontally, vertically, or both at the same time, along the row and column borders of the worksheet. To create slices of equal sizes, this command easily accomplishes that, letting you choose the number of slices in the process. To display header rows atop each linked worksheet slice, when the worksheet is open, choose the rows you would like displayed, control click on one of the row numbers, and turn on the Pin Row option. A pin icon will then be displayed next to these row numbers. Dragging the bottom edge of a worksheet slice adjusts its height. The data in linked slices adjusts accordingly. When splitting a worksheet vertically along a column border, using the Object Context menu command, a jagged red crop marker indicates where the split occurred. This allows you to crop worksheets and then delete columns to the right that you do not want to display. Worksheets can also be cropped vertically by clicking and dragging either the left or right edge of the worksheet. This adjusts which columns are displayed and all linked slices are automatically cropped at the same location, keeping data consistent from one slice to the next. In either case, to adjust the crop for all linked slices, simply click and drag the worksheet edge nearest to the column crop marker. When there is more data to display than is currently showing, creating a linked worksheet will generate another, equally sized worksheet that will flow as much remaining data as it can display. Subsequent linked slices after the first one can be copied and pasted to other sheets, and the flow of data will still automatically occur when needed. And, if anticipating more data to arrive in a worksheet in the future, drag the bottom edge of the worksheet down to make more space available to accommodate that data when it is added. Related to worksheet slicing, there are controls in the Object Info Palette. The option to Display Worksheet Numbers displays a non-printing number with each linked slice in a series of slices. Acting the same way as the Object Context menu command with a similar name, creating a linked worksheet creates another linked slice that will receive additional data from your worksheet. When you have multiple linked slices of a worksheet, the Select Previous and Select Next buttons do just that, even if linked slices are on different sheet layers. The Anchor widget allows you to specify which point of a worksheet is anchored in place or pinned when the worksheet expands or shrinks as it reports more or less information. The Unlink button will create a new, completely independent instance of the same worksheet in place of the slice you previously had. And, 
to automatically expand the last linked slice as new items are added to your design, activate this Auto Expand option in the Object Info palette. To remove all linked slices and start the layout process of a worksheet again from scratch, select this Delete command from the Object Context menu. The visual cues associated with worksheet instances and their linked slices are as follows. The blue icon near the lower right corner of a worksheet indicates that the Auto Expand option is on in the Object Info palette, and that this linked slice is the last, or only, worksheet slice in a series. It also means that this linked slice will automatically expand to reveal rows that have been added to the worksheet or shrink to fit if rows are deleted. The green icon indicates that the Auto Expand option is off in the Object Info palette. If this linked slice is not the last slice in the series, the rows that follow these rows in the worksheet are in another linked slice on the drawing. If this is the last linked slice in the series, this slice shows all remaining rows from the worksheet. And the red icon indicates that this worksheet has more rows of data available to display that it currently isn't showing in another linked slice. It is your cue to either create a linked worksheet slice to reveal that data, or expand the worksheet slice by dragging its bottom edge. The blue icon near the top left corner of a linked slice indicates that there is another worksheet slice prior to this one that contains the data that precedes this one. When selecting one linked slice of a worksheet, the other linked slices of that same worksheet are highlighted in red. Finally, there are Vectorworks preferences available to fine-tune your working experience. The Column Crop Marker Display preference lets you choose whether column crop markers are always shown or only shown when you select a worksheet. And similarly, the worksheet menu and link icons can be set to always appear or only appear when you select a worksheet. Working with worksheets provides a clear interface, easy to access controls, and lots of options for laying out and arranging your data. For more information, please consult the AI Assistant, Online Help, or Vectorworks University.